Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's broadcast. Uh, I'm Meryl Stewart. I'm CEO of Marketing and Business Solutions. Uh, thrilled to be with you this week uh, to talk a little bit about how to engage a marketing professional in helping to grow your business um, and your strategy, your marketing strategy. And um, I've gotten a lot of questions about this lately. And so I thought, you know, let's talk about it. Um, so I always believe that with the right team of people that anything's possible, but you have to have the right uh, members on the team. You have to know what strengths and weaknesses um, the team has, and you also have to know where you want to go. Once you know that, then you can kind of start putting the pieces together. And one of the biggest pieces of that is marketing. What do you do? Um, how do you do it? Who should you talk to? Do you need help with it? Um, those are a lot of things that the people ask. Um, folks ask, you know, I, I do marketing, but um, do you know anyone that else that does marketing? And it's that's a loaded question. <laughs> if you're doing marketing and you need help, then there's probably something specific that you need help with. Um, some people ask, I need to do more on social media. Do you do that? Well, yeah, we do that. But it's a more calculated process than just saying you need help with social media. Um, so I thought it would be helpful to discuss some tips on engaging marketing expertise for your business, your organization. So here we go. Um, what is happening in your business that you might need help with, with marketing? That's the first question you need to ask yourself. Have things changed uh, in how you're doing business? Have your customers maybe changed your target audience? And so some of the things, some of those elements are really important to know. If your target customer has changed and you're not sure how to reach them, then you might need help reaching them in a different way. You might need to implement different tactics than you're currently using in order to, to reach them or to get them to react to something that you're doing more successfully. Um, another reason you might need help with marketing is that you're not as active on social media as you want to be. And right now, any communications or marketing plan that businesses are putting together has to include social media. You, you can track the results better. You can see where um, your return on investment is. You can tweak your plan much easier if you know what's working and what's not. And another reason why people might say, I need help with marketing is because they have poor communications going on internally or externally that's kind of fragmenting the message about what they're trying to say about their business. So there's a couple of things that you need to understand. I guess there's a difference in the types of marketing professionals that you could engage in helping you with something. Um, so kind of defining where you need the most help as you kind of listen through this. And then I'm happy to take questions if anyone has them to kind of refine uh, maybe a specific problem that you're having. But the first thing is brand strategy. Brand strategy is something that many businesses need help with. But helping you with a brand strategy takes a certain type of professional that is really going to help you decide or better determine what the very essence of your business is. Your brand is not just a logo. It's not just your website. It's really the core values and the essence of who you are and what you stand for and what it is that you are going to try to accomplish out there in the marketplace. So, so it informs everything you do as a business. Uh, it should, including your marketing, your sales, your business strategy, your development, and the customer experience. Um, the pieces that you create to represent that brand include your logo and your website and any collateral that you might put together, um, but they should all work together to really tell a story about who you are. So if you're looking for help there, you're looking more for someone who's going to do brand strategy and you have to kind of know that that's what it is because those words are important to tell someone um, as you're potentially looking for a professional to engage. The second area that many, many businesses need help with is more on the content marketing side. So the content marketing side is really focused on everything that all the information, all the words that you use to tell who you are, what you do, why you do it, um, what can people expect if they engage with you or they buy a product or service that you have. The content marketing looks like your blogs, your social media, um, your website content, items that you can download or uh, video, you know, videos that you may have, um, collateral pieces that you may create. And so all of that content, that storytelling piece is something that is a critical part of your marketing plan, but you also need to know that there are certain professionals that are really good at that and there's other professionals that aren't. 
Um, so marketing isn't a one size fits all. It's really uh, kind of tailored depending on, on what elements that you need. You might need help with the content marketing. You might need help getting your content across multiple platforms. And that may be more of a focus um, so that maybe you have one or two social media platforms that you're using, but you need to expand to two additional ones. And the, the reason that you would decide to make that decision is because your customer or your tar target audience has changed or shifted and they're on a different platform or they're receiving information in a different way. That's what would really help you make the decision of what you need and where you need to go. But getting your content out across multiple platforms or additional channels would be one reason. Um, the next would be, you know, content marketer would help you create a plan and that plan should be, um, you know, kind of a timeline. It should be, what, what is the content that I need to put out? When am I going to do it? How am I gonna do it? And all of those pieces should work together so that it's not just, we're gonna post on Facebook one day, or we're gonna post on Twitter, you know, multiple times another day. The content that you're, you're creating really should be kind of a, it's, it's, it's like a dance. And if it all works together well, then it, you have a beautiful kind of product at the end in a comprehensive way that customers are engaging with you. If it's very fragmented where you're talking about one thing one day and something else another day, and there isn't some strategy to it, you kind of lose people's attention. Because remember, you need frequency. People have to see it many more times than once um, and in order for it to kind of sink in and for them to act on something. A good content marketer will also, um, you know, have a goal to create content that attracts people to your business, um, that keeps them top of mind. You want someone who's really going to take that brand strategy, you know, the essence of who you are and integrate the content that is important, that's going to attract people to want to engage with you and pull it together in a way that no matter whether you're doing marketing, sales, business development, product de um, design, or service launches, or any of those things that all of it is working together and that you're driving customers to either purchase something, purchase it again, and it's helping to support that, that customer retention as well. The third type of professional that um, kind of we see in the marketing space is a growth marketer. So many times startups use a growth marketer. They may not spend as much time on the traditional channels of reaching audiences because their goal is really to raise as much money as possible to get their business launched, to get revenue going, to get customers in the door at a much faster pace than maybe an established business has that needs to create a marketing plan or to tweak a marketing plan. So a growth marketer is really help, is focused on helping a business grow faster than that, that traditional marketing typically allows. And it helps um, find customers through really the business development process and helping to establish what that process is and how the team of that business can engage in that process to develop relationships and customer um, engagement as fast as possible. The fourth type of kind of marketing professional that's out there um, that's worth kind of investigating is really just a coach, uh, somebody that you may be uh, the CEO or a lead um, person in your organization or your business and really looking for someone to acknowledge what you have done from a marketing perspective, but also what you need. And it's someone to help coach you along, to help teach you basically how to continue to be a self-marketer, um, but somebody that can kind of help you avoid the pitfalls of maybe some marketing mistakes that you really can't afford to make and to ensure that your budget goes as far as it possibly can with the highest return on investment. Um, there's someone that's really focused on empowering businesses and organizations to, to take things on their own and they guide them through those steps. Um, they're also someone that can help you prioritize things. If you tend to get distracted, which right now I think many of us are, are all dealing with that on a daily basis, but you're having a hard time prioritizing what to do next with marketing. You know you should do it, but you don't know when. Um, a marketing coach is a great idea. There's someone that can help you um, kind of lead you through what should happen next um, or the timing of other things that you have planned so that you have the best results. So those are kind of the areas of marketing that most people tend to fall under. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about what you should be considering when you go to hire somebody. Um, I've you know, hired a, a firm to actually help me with my own social media and I think that sounds funny because I'm a marketing person, but I think it's really hard to market yourself. And well, at least it is for me, but for most people it is. And for many clients that we've worked with, 
um, one of the challenges is, is that they're just too close to it. Sometimes they, they can't step back to really assess what they need um, unless someone else with kind of fresh eyes comes in. So one of the things that I did in going through this process for our own company was to interview multiple people, um, was to really look at what is the expertise that I'm looking for. And I knew for me, I needed more consistency on social media. So what is it that I can do for my business? Who's the person who's going to get me understand what I stand for and what our business stands for, but who, who can help me kind of um, graduate to the next level of engagement that can help me build our audience that can establish expertise uh, and set initiatives in place that I can react to as a business owner. But I really need them to kind of push me in that direction because a lot of things take my time and my energy and, you know, get thrown um, in front of me to do. And from a priority perspective, you know, my own marketing kind of falls off the radar. So some things to consider. One is um, it's great to hire a marketing consultant. Um, I know consultants tend to get, you know, in some cases a bad rap, um, whether it's that they're too expensive or, you know, they don't really solve my problem. They tell me a whole bunch of things I already know and um, I don't really need someone to, I'm not going to pay someone to tell me that. I think I look at it differently. I look at it from how can I leverage expertise that I don't have in someone else that has it? If I were to hire somebody as an employee that maybe just came out of college or um, is new to an industry, there's a lot of learning that that person's going to have to do. And it's really an investment of time and years of training and um, professional development to get that person to the place where um, I really need them to be. As a business, I don't have time. I don't have time to wait two, three, four years for someone to get their feet under themselves to learn something. And I'm not saying that you don't hire people that need that learning and, and uh, can they can be an incredible asset to your company. But if you have a, an initial or an immediate need for marketing, um, and if you're realizing you need marketing, you're probably a little bit too late, but it's it's something that you can continue to um, to perfect. But when you need that, you need expertise now. And so engaging someone that has expertise that you don't, really learning about what it is that they can provide and if it fits with your needs um, and making sure that they really understand, you know, the business goals. Many times a professional consultant in marketing really understands the ins and outs of the business. They understand the ins and outs of different platforms and initiatives that you can use to market your business. And so um, th that learning curve is very short. They're really just learning about you and what the business needs and what where you've been and where you're going. Um, that's much easier to digest in, in a kind of expertise level professional than it is for them to learn their whole trade um, from the beginning. So that leveraging their expertise is, is really important thing. The other element to engaging a marketing consultant is something I mentioned before. They provide an outsider's perspective. Um, they can look at your brand, kind of who you are as that business, what's your essence, um, what you stand for. They can also look at your marketing and pretty easily tell if there are gaps, um, especially if your marketing is not really living up to your, your brand or your brand strategy, making sure that the two work together. Um, but sometimes we're just too close to see it. And if you don't have a strategy, they can help you create one. And if you have a strategy, many times they can take that strategy and really kind of look at it and determine pretty quickly where it is that you need to try something different. Um, they can look at past metrics, past performance, past engagement with your customers and really kind of determine, okay, this is working, this is not working, we need to change gears here and they can tweak that plan. So they don't always necessarily have to start from scratch, but they do need to have a much more comprehensive view of what it is that you're doing and where it is that you want to go. So you do have to have in mind, you know, what your goals are. They can also establish um, key performance metrics. So KPIs or uh, key performance indicators that can help track uh, what's working and what's not. So a lot of times, you know, I have people say, well, you know, can you give me a quote on, engaging you in marketing services. And, um, you know, the next part of the conversation is, well, how much is it going to cost? And I don't know that I can afford that if I don't see a return on my investment, and which is completely understandable. And so part of what marketing professionals can do um, if you're bringing somebody in is really kind of tailor what it is that the goals should be 
where it is that, how it is that you're going to measure that and how you're going to measure it against return on investment. You know, if part of your goal is to bring awareness to what you're doing, not necessarily generating sales from it. Although I think that if you're bringing awareness, it should be also generating sales. But if you're bringing awareness to something, then maybe the sales aren't necessarily, you know, the most important part. Maybe it's the awareness piece or the advocacy piece that you're trying to generate for an initiative that you have. Spending your marketing dollars on that, you know, the return on that should be, you know, how many more people are engaged or how many more people are sharing, not necessarily translating to how many more people buy, bought my product. But if it is very much sales driven, then yeah, the, the key performance indicators, the initiatives that are getting planned really need to tie back to how is is money being generated back to the business? How is it benefiting us financially? So that if I make this investment in hiring somebody, I can see that return and I can decide what I need to tweak along the way. A question um, that you can ask a marketing consultant that you'd like to hire is, what do you think of our current marketing campaigns and what can be done to improve them? They should have some ideas and they should be honest about it. Um, I know I get that question a lot and I'm not afraid to be honest because you know, if I'm not, then, you know, the process <laughs> takes a lot longer and I'm not really meeting the needs of the customer or potential customer I'm talking to. So you really should receive an honest answer from them that really details what they think is great about your strategy and what requires major improvement. So at least you have a baseline of where you're headed. Um, typically it's, it's the answer isn't, you just should start over and scratch everything that you're doing and recreate yourself and all of your brand identity. That's usually not necessary unless there's a significant issue or other factors at play. Most of the time, your brand strategy might need a little tweaking. You might need to get clearer about what your values are, but the marketing strategy itself on how you're implementing things is probably going to change slightly but could also build on things that you already have established. So really talking to someone that's going to give you an honest opinion about that is really important. Um, the other important thing, and I alluded to this before, is that you really need to have a budget. Um, in, to engage someone in consulting work, especially in marketing, they typically work on a project basis, um, on an hourly rate or a monthly retainer. Um, they lean more towards the monthly retainer because marketing is not a quick fix. It's not a, you know, I snap my fingers and turn on all your stuff, all your social media and all of your initiatives and you have money floating through the door. That's not how it works. It takes time. It takes frequency. It, you have to ensure that you're meeting, targeting the right audience and that you're on the platforms or creating initiatives that are actually going to reach those customers or that audience. So I say, you know, tell clients, typically to plan for six months, plan for a six month, enga six month engagement to really come up with a strategy, engage professional help in the areas that you need it. Um, you know, have that person if they if they are um, able to implement that for you or work with your team to implement it so that you can really get a sense of what's working and what's not. It gives you a chance to really determine if the consultant that you hired is a good fit personally, um, if they're if they're kind of uh, um, personality and work ethic really align with your business. And so um, it gives you a chance to let the marketing take course and work um, within that six month period, but also to assess if it's something you want to continue. And after that, you can continue, I would say at least in six month increments moving forward so that, you know, you continue to allow time for tweaks and, and changes in your strategy. And the last thing I would say is, interview multiple people. Um, when I went through the process of, of hiring someone to help me with my own social media, I, I interviewed a number of people. And there were people that I felt were really great and, and got me and aligned with who, who we are as a business. But then when I asked some details about you know their performance or past projects or things that they had accomplished, everything didn't quite add up or they were really good in in one area, but that wasn't necessarily the area that I needed help with. So it's really important to interview multiple people. It's great to get ask your friends, ask other businesses who they use to get referrals and references on professionals in your area or abroad that might be a good fit. Um, but it's really, you know, it's just as important as hiring a member of your team who's going to, you know, be part of your team virtually or in an office. Um, it's it's that, that important. So, you know, Hire like you would any employee, interview multiple candidates, 
see who's the best fit, who has the right expertise, and um, you know, ensure that all of the pieces are are going to be working together so that you have the next best plan for your for your company. So, if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to um, type them in. You know, we've had a few people join us during this uh, broadcast, and I will um, post additionally some uh, some links uh, into the comments to some of the areas that. I pulled different information from um, some of it is ours, but others it's uh, things that are, have been found out there that are kind of best practices in this process. Um, so I will share those as well. And um, as always, if you have a qu additional questions after this broadcast, please feel free to email me or visit our website to learn more about what we do or just to touch base. And um, hopefully we can point you in the right direction, um, whether you engage us or not. So I don't think we have any questions yet. Um, so I'm going to wrap up this episode of, uh, of our broadcast this week. And I look forward to speaking with you all next week um, on another engaging topic. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay safe and be healthy. Thank you guys. <laughs>